than 24 hours with a link to where it's at on our site. Um, if not, you can always go into our website underneath webinars and there is an option there to watch recorded webinars. So you just click on that button and it will give you a list of everything that's been recorded. Obviously, just look for the one that says version 9 physical inventory. So <clears throat> to start with, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this window. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to raise your hand and interrupt me. I will not be offended in the least. I'd rather that you ask questions while they're fresh in your mind than try to remember what your question was at the very end. So um, the first place that I usually start with any physical inventory is to make sure that my scanner and the computer are going to communicate with each other. If they don't, we're kind of dead in the water right there at the beginning. So that's always the first thing that I like to set up. Now, I do not have a scanner set up on my computer, but I'm fully capable of showing you how to set up yours. So first place you're going to go is to Options and then to Workstation Preferences. Okay, and once that opens up, you're going to come over here to Peripherals, and you're going to highlight the Inventory Scanner all the way down near the bottom. Okay. Now you have three choices in here, but if you're renting them from us or if you have bought scanners from us, they're going to be one of the first two choices here. The portable data terminal is if you rent some PT scanners from us. Those are the older model scanners, but I'm telling you they're just little workhorses. That's why they're still in use because they just keep working and working and working. They're not super Techno, you know, techie, but they do work really well. So that portable terminal, data terminal, <clears throat> once you choose that, you want to click on the configure button and let it know whether you've plugged it into COM1 or COM2. Those are the two most common ports that you're going to use. Now, typically, if you've gotten your computers from us, COM1 is going to be about halfway down the back of the computer. Around the general area, everything else is plugged into. COM2 is usually all the way down at the bottom. Now, again, every computer is a little different. If you got them from us, that's generally the role. But if you bought them someplace else, you may have to try one. And if it doesn't work, try the other. So I'm going to set mine for COM1. This baud rate right here, the default of 9600 is perfectly OK and the handheld memory of 512K. You can change it, but usually for the PTs, we leave it, leave it at the 512. And then click on OK. And then you can do a test. Now, unfortunately, this test doesn't really test if the computer and the, and the scanner are communicating. So I actually choose a different test. Now, if you go with the palm, you'll use the palm if you're using a symbol scanner, which you may rent from us. If you're using any model of the Janum, if you're using the Dolphin, the Honeywell, any of those other units that we, we have for rent or for sale, you're going to use this palm one. And again, you're going to go to the configure. <clears throat> now, depending on if you were going to download your inventory into the scanner. If you rent it from us, you want to make sure you set it for basic, because we don't rent the units typically that you can download your inventory into. If you own the scanner, you can choose Smart Scan, and you can t basically take your inventory file and upload it into the scanner. The benefit of doing that is as you're scanning items, if you scan an item that is not in your inventory, which would typically come up as an error, with Smart Scan, it's going to give you a different sounding beep when you scan that item because it doesn't find it. So you know right at the point of scanning where your errors are. So that is one of those benefits that comes with the Smart Scan. Again, that's only you're only going to have the capability of using that if you own the scanners. Um, so once that's set up, 
go ahead and click OK. And again, you would do a test. It's just to kind of let the system know that everything is set up. Once those are all in place, I'm going to turn mine back to the portable terminal. You would obviously click on the Update button. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the other thing that I want, I would like everyone to double check is their system preference settings. Versus the older versions, uh, how do you know if you have the portable or the Palm? The portable or the Palm, good question. The portable unit, like I said, you would have rented them from us, and there's going to be a download cable, that a cable that connects the scanner to the computer. If it came with a cradle, then you're going to choose the Palm option. That's probably the easiest way to know the difference. Okay, good question. Okay, so under Options and System Preferences, And then under Local Preferences, and then Merchandise, you'll notice there's an option for the PI tool. The main thing is to go to the option right here and make sure that you're set for Use Zones. Even the smallest of inventories, we recommend that they use zones because by having smaller sections of your inventory, it's easier to find scanning errors if you need to. So before you start your physical inventory, if you do not already have one, we do recommend that you draw a makeshift map of your store. Now, it does not have to be anything fancy. You know, we're not looking for any masterpieces here. Squares and circles and X's will work perfectly OK. But we do recommend that you section off your store into smaller cross sections you know, and I usually recommend that you go with really common sense starting and stopping spots. So if you have a rounder rack, that rounder rack is a perfect section. Start at the very smallest size, work your way around it, back to the smallest size when you're all done, go download the scanner. If you have shelving units on the wall, find a good starting and stopping spot that makes sense. Now, on your on your map, we want you to mark up those sections the same way that they are on the floor. So that rounder rack could be a circle in the middle of the floor. A shelf unit could be a rectangle along the edge of your store floor. Um, so you know, whatever makes sense to you is what we want you to set up. But we want you to give each of those sections a name. Now that name can be alphanumeric or both. We do try to keep the names under five characters, but with version 9, you're not limited to, to five characters. Okay, So that way, when you look at your map, you can see that you have 43 sections in your map. And as you're going through the scanning process and you finish off a section, cross it off on your map. So if you really like the way the map came out this year, I always recommend make, make a copy of it. Put it in the file for next year. Always make a copy. That way you can mark one up, but you have one that's in pristine condition. OK. Now, I do generally recommend, I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So once you have your scanner hooked up in workstation preferences, I do generally recommend that you scan a few items into the scanner and go into a new receipt and make sure that you can download that scanner into a receipt. If it downloads into a receipt, it will, it will download into the physical inventory tool. So the reason I choose a receipt is that way it doesn't matter who the vendor is, what the items are. They can be just a hodgepodge of everything that you carry, but just like in a regular receipt, the people might buy a variety of items. So once you're in a new receipt, I'm just waiting for mine to catch up. Okay. Now once once this is open, you'll notice over here on the side menu I have upload items and download items.
So I, I was just checking with a co coworker. I always get these two mixed up because they're opposite of what I would normally think that they would be. You want to use the upload items. Now, that's the part that, that confuses me because to, in my mind, I would be downloading the items. But that's why I, I'm thinking it's the upload items. But you basically put your scanner in the cradle if it's a palm unit. If it is a PT, you're going to plug the download cable the other end of the download cable. Because keep in mind, one end of it is plugged into your COM port. You're going to plug the other end of it into the bottom of the scanner that you rented from us. And then you're going to click on Upload Items, and it will tell you to prepare your device. Okay. Now, it's going to come back. I don't have any scanner hooked up, so there's nothing for it to connect with. But normally, it would be downloading the, the three or four items that you scanned into the scanner, and it would drop them into the receipt. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Okay. Now, any questions about setting up the scanner? Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the scanners. Um, the good news is there that most of the palms are generally the same. And the PT is very consistently the same. So now the PT, or the portable terminal, that particular unit has a, it's like a big block, like those old-fashioned cell phones when cell phones first came out. And yes, I do remember when that happened. Um, but it's just a big block, like a big brick type of scanner. And on the face of it, you have a number pad, and you have four function keys along the top. Now, those function keys are really what's going to make the difference in how you move around in the system. Now, if you rent from us a PT, you will get a function sheet in the box with the PT as well as instructions. Know that any time that you rent scanners from us, you will get a physical inventory um, manual in the in the box. Okay, so the I'm going to kind of quickly go over the functions of the PT because unless you have one in your hand, it isn't going to make a lot of sense to you because it's literally all theoretical until you have it in your hand. So with the PT. The, like I said, the function keys are first and foremost the most important keys on that, that PT unit. The F4 key is your escape key. So if you ever get someplace that you don't intend to be, you get lost, you're looking for a different screen, the F4 key is going to escape you out and allow you to see other options. Now, the F3 key is your delete key. Now, if you inadvertently scanned an item that you did not mean to scan into this section, you can delete that individual item by pressing F3 twice. Okay. Now, the first time is you telling the, the scanner that you want to delete it, and the second time is you confirming that you really do want to delete it. The F2 key allows you to change the quantity. So you can scan an item, and if you've got a full case of that item that has not been opened and you know that they come 24 to a case, yes, you could scan each and every one of those 24. Or you could scan one and change the quantity to 24 by using the F2 key. Okay. Now the F1 key allows you to find an item. So if you are not sure if you scanned a particular item or not, um, you know, maybe you got called away, maybe you need you had to run to the bathroom, whatever the reason was, you got you've lost track of where you were or where you left off. So the F1 key allows you to find an item. Now what will happen on the screen it will go to, normally the screen on the PT will show last entry. It, down in parentheses on the bottom of the screen, it says last entry. When you go to find an item, when you press F1 to find the item, 
that changes to say find item. And then you can go ahead and scan the or enter in the item in question. And if it finds it, it takes you right to that item. If it doesn't find it, it will say item not found and it will kick you back to the last entry screen because it assumes that you're going to need to scan that item because you didn't find what you were looking for. So um, that's the main reason that I, I point out that it's going to change on the screen is because that's a really easy way of keeping track of whether or not it found it or not. Okay? Um, you can manually enter in barcodes, you know, barcode numbers. Just make sure that any time that your hand touches the number pad that you press the enter key afterwards. That's really, really critical. If I type in a quantity, it's important that I, I press the enter key after I type in the quantity. That enter key is your way of letting the, the scanner know, I'm done with my entry, let's move on. Otherwise, if you don't press the enter key, say you changed your quantity to 24 but didn't press the enter key and you started scanning the next item, it would add the item number from that barcode or the ALU number from that barcode into your quantity field along with the 24. So very, very important that you press enter after you, you scan, after you touch the number pad. Now that's the PT, the portable terminal. For all other units, the Janum, the Symbol, any of the other ones that I mentioned earlier, your screen, your screen on the scanner is going to be a, quite a bit more user friendly because everything that you need is on that screen. So as you scan items, you will see a list grow of the barcode number that you scanned, whether that's UPC or ALU, and you'll also see the quantity. Now, if you're using SmartScan, you could also be seeing the description of the item as well. But you're seeing a list on the screen in the order that you scan them of the items that you scanned. And you can go back and highlight any item that you want and delete it or change the quantity of it. Now down along the bottom of the screen on the scanner, you will see there will be a quantity button that you can tap with the stylus and it will bring up a number pad. You type in the quantity, touch the enter key, that's how the scanner knows that you're done with your entry. If you want to delete something, there will be an, an X on the screen. That X constitutes the delete button. Make sure you're highlighted on the right item. Touch the X, and then it will have you confirm it. It'll, it'll pop up, are you sure you want to delete type of messages. There will also be a manual button on the screen that it, you can touch with the stylus. That manual will allow you to, man it will also bring up a number pad, like a 10 key, and that will allow you to manually enter in a barcode number if for whatever reason it won't scan. Okay? So any questions about the scanners? I know it's kind of hard to, to tell what's going on um, without having the scanner next to you. Okay? Okay then, so I'm going to go ahead and get into the physical inventory tool, the part we're all the most interested in. So the physical inventory in version 9 is, can be found in the inventory module. Now some of you may have a separate inventory button like I do here. Some of you may have a merchandise button that you use to get into the inventory does not matter which one you have, they're both going to take you into the same spot. Thought I'd use that, thought I'd use that quick moment to uh, take a drink of my coffee. Okay? So, once you're in your regular inventory, you'll notice off to the side that you have a button that says physical inventory. So you're going to go into the physical inventory and you're going to go into stores, the very top stores. 
This one down here is the, the archive stores, meaning the physical inventories you've done in the past. You, uh, Vicki wanted to know if you could use a register scanner for inventory. You can. Um, it's not something that we recommend. You would have to bring everything up to the register to scan it. And I'll, remind, uh, I'll try to remember to show you the screen you'll want to be in when you're scanning it in, because you do need to scan it into a particular screen. Um, with the portable scanners, that's how most of the physical inventories are done. But yes, you could technically do it with a regular register scanner. Okay. So, but if you're using a regular inventory scanner, all of the settings that we're about to talk about, you're still going to need to do. You're not going to scan your quantities directly into your inventory. You're going to scan them into the physical inventory so you can look at them make sure that they're correct before you put them into the inventory. So you're going to go ahead and start with stores. Now, when this first comes up, you have to give your physical inventory a name. So I'm just going to call it webinar 15. We'll do that. Okay. You have to choose which store you're doing. So maybe I'm not going to count my warehouse. I'm counting my regular store today. Choose the store that you're going to count. Now, if you are a single store, it will already be checked. If you are a remote location, it should already be checked. The only time that you may need to choose this is if you have multiple stores and you're the main corporate headquarters store. So because that store can do a physical for any of the other stores. So I'm going to choose my store and then click on Create. It is going to bring up a filter based on your system preferences. If you are doing a full scale physical inventory, you are going to leave this blank. Now if your filter comes up and this Clear All button is available, as you can see mine is grayed out, but if you if yours is not grayed out, make sure you click on that first because that means something is stuck on your filter and we need to get it off there before we start the physical inventory. So, but if it is grayed out like mine, just simply click OK. That screen right there is the only difference between counting your entire store and counting just one vendor or one department for a cycle count. If we were doing a cycle count, we would have put in the vendor or the department or whatever we were grouping and counting today, and then it would only allow us to download and to update items that belong to whatever we had put in our filter. So what this is doing here is it's taken a snapshot on this date and this time of where my physical quantities are as of this very moment. Okay. Um, we do recommend, if at all possible, and we understand that there are circumstances that sometimes don't allow for it, do your physical inventories when you are closed. You are going to get a much more accurate physical inventory, and that's kind of the whole idea, is to get an accurate count. It's easy to get a miscount if you're open for business because, one, your, in your first instinct is to take care of the customer. So if you're in the middle of scanning a section and a customer wants to talk to you, you're not going to tell them no necessarily. You're going to go over and help them. And it's easy to lose your place. It's also very common for customers to pick up an item from one area of the store, carry it around with them, and when they find something they like better, just set down the first item someplace else. The problem is now we don't know if that item they picked up and moved has been counted or not. Um, the, though, that's probably the two most common reasons that you should be closed. It's also very difficult to keep customers out of certain sections because I've had customers say, well, what if I just section off the store and this, this area over here is off limits? It's really hard to, to tell a customer that, I'm sorry, I'd like to sell you something from over there, but I can't. So if at all possible, if 
your landlord or whatever doesn't allow you to close during business hours, like if you're at a mall, you know, we, we would still recommend plan for an overnighter because that way you can get an accurate count with no customers to interrupt you while you're doing that. Okay? So once you've got your physical, your physical count, or, or starting count, this starting count is going to be very important when we get towards the end and we look at the discrepancies. This is what it's going to compare to. But now that I've started my physical, I'm now going to go into PI zones here on the side. Okay, and when I go into PI zones, every time a scanner is brought back to download, you're going to create a new zone. Okay, now you are going to have to choose your store number each time. Give it a name. Maybe I do uh, left front one. Okay. In the notes, I can put what area of the store that was, who it was that was scanning that area, um, what type of items were in there. It is strictly optional. You do not have to use it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and create, and that's going to create my zone. Okay. Now. Once I've created the zone, I need to go into scan, and I need to make a new scan screen. I can either use the new button up here or the add counts button. Now, I tend to use the add counts because it's just a short mouse stroke down from the button I was just on. So if I click on add counts, you're going to click on the portable device tab, and you should get that message that we got like we did when we tested it. Downloading, please wait. Okay. With the palm unit, once it's in the cradle, there's going there's a hot sync button on the cradle. It's the only button on the front of the cradle. You're going to press that. If you're using a PT unit, you're going to press the F4 key to escape you. F2 will say send data, and then you'll press F1 to start the send. So F4, F2, F1. Okay. Now, I can only do a manual lookup, so I'm going to do a couple of items that I know are in here. Now, if I manually enter in a number that it does not recognize, it will tell me immediately, item not found. Now, Vicki, you were asking about using your point of sale scanner to do it. You would need to do yours underneath the manual entry. You could still do zones if you wanted and section off your store, but you would need to be in the manual entry and you would scan the barcode right here in the lookup and then enter in the quantity if there was multiple quantities. For you, I'd probably recommend that you scan every item, though, just to make sure that you're getting the right quantity with the right item. Now, I do want to point out, if you are doing a manual entry, because we will talk about this in a little bit, it defaults to shooting you to the next item. So as soon as I take, let me see, take off a couple of those. No. Okay, so as soon as I press enter here, it automatically assumes a quantity of one and puts that quantity down here. If you need to scan in a variety of quantities, change it to quantity for current item. That way, you can type in the item number and it brings you to the quantity, and then you can type in the quantity and press enter. Okay, so. It does default to next item, but you can change it. Okay. Hopefully, mo other than for then, if you're using your point of sale scanner, most of your your sections or your zones should be going in through the portable device. It's just a lot quicker, and so I'm going to go ahead and close this. That shows me everything that I just scanned in. Okay. Now, once it's scanned in, I'm going to back out one level, and you will see that it shows that I counted four good scans. Scans are equivalent to SKU numbers. 
counts are equivalent to the number of units because I counted in five on that one item. That's why I have a count of eight here. Now, you can choose to merge your zone as you go, or you can merge at the very end. Merging is the equivalent of saving it and merging it with all the other counts that I've done so far. So if you have a given item that is in three different sections of your store, you do not have to gather them all together so you can count them. Count them in their given section, and the system, when you merge the zones, it will say, okay, you had three in this section, you had 10 in the back room, and you had one up in the display window. So when all of them are merged together, it will update with a quantity of 14. So do not worry about gathering ever alike items together because the merging will do that for you. The merging is also a way of letting yourself know that this section is error free. I've got my scan print out if I want it. And I don't want to have to think about it anymore. So know that when you are in the scan window, and I apologize for missing this when I went through it, you can get a printout of this particular window. And I think I have mine on. Okay. So I'm going to go to the V9 zone report just to kind of show you what it looks like. Okay. So it will show you what the zone was. It'll show you whatever you put in the notes. So if you put in who scanned it, you'll see that there. If you put in what type of items are in that zone, you'll see that there. Okay. It will show you the items and the scan quantity and the price that you scanned in. It also lets you know the zone number. Okay, This is zone number one. You can get a print out of this if you want to. You do not have to. Okay, Although, if you have errors, I definitely recommend, we'll talk about errors in a minute, I definitely recommend that you print that out because that same zone report that you just looked at, when we print it from the error screen, it's going to print the errors at the top of all of those items that were good. Okay, So back here on our screen right here, we've just downloaded this section, and it's error free. I'm going to go ahead and merge it. Okay, And yes, I want to continue. So you will notice that I have a check mark over here in the merge column. That lets me know this section, this zone, is completely done. I don't need to think about it anymore. Okay. Now another scanner comes back and they're ready to download their scanner. Again, I'm going to start a new zone. And we will go left, middle, wall. Okay. I'm going to create this zone. Now you will notice it did not highlight the new zone that I created. That's because we're not sorting by anything. So what I usually sort by in reverse order is my created date. That way the one that I just created will always sit on top and it will always be the one that's highlighted. Okay? So just turn your sort arrow, you know, straight straight up rather than going down and it will always put the the most recent one on top. So now that I have my new zone, I'm going to go into Scanned. I'm going to go to Add Counts, go to my portable terminal, download my terminal, F4, F2, F1, or the hot sync button. Okay. Now, back over to my manual. Let's see if the wild, yeah, I was not sure if the wild card would work there. So now I know. Okay, I'm going to scan, put just a couple more in. Oh, a little too high there. Okay, so I have my items in there. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Now, 
at the time of closing it, when you're downloading from a scanner, if there are any errors, it will tell you when it's done downloading that some items were not found and they were moved to the error view. Don't let that freak you out. That is not uncommon. It could be that it's an item that you've inactivated. It could be that they scanned the UPC code when, you're, when there's no UPC code entered in for the system. So don't let it throw you off. Okay, it does happen, and it happens almost all the time. It's very rare that you don't have at least one or two scanning errors during a physical inventory. More common is to have, you know, 50 of them over, over the course of an entire physical. I mean, hopefully not all in one section, but it is not uncommon. So if you have errors, go ahead and say OK to the warning message it gives you and close your window anyway to where you're looking at this screen, you're going to then back out to where you're seeing your zones listed. And you'll notice over here there is an errors button. This errors button, and I don't have any errors, so it will be blank. But this errors window will show you the items that were bad as well as the items that were good that you scanned around it. So you know that the bad items are the ones that all that's on the line is an import ID or the number that you scanned into the scanner and the quantity that you scanned into the scanner. Everything else is going to be blank because Retail Pro doesn't recognize this number. So it can't give you any information about it. But you will have a line underneath it that does have all of that information, and that's the item that you scanned right before it. Now, I had mentioned to you that there is a print option here, and if you had errors, this print option would be available. Use that print option to print out what your errors were. It's easier if you have it in black and white when you go back to look for it. So if you just downloaded a scanner and there was three errors, you're going to come into the error screen. You're going to print off at least the first page of the printout. And you're going to give that back to the person that just handed you the scanner. And you're going to tell them, OK, I need you to go back, back to your section. And I need you to find these items that are blank. Look for the import ID number that you scanned in with this number. Okay? They're going to go back to their section. And hopefully, sooner rather than later, they find the items. Sometimes you're lucky, and you can find the item. You may already know what the item is, just because you know, they may know what it is, because they searched and they searched for the, for the tag barcode that you put on there, but they couldn't find one, so they scanned the only barcode they could find. So they may already have an idea of which items might be errors. Sometimes they find them quick. Sometimes it takes five or 10 minutes to find them. Okay. So once they find them, though, it is important that they bring those error items back to you at the computer. If you know immediately what is wrong with them, then you can jot down the ALU or the UPC number and the quantity and have them put it back on the shelf. More than likely, though, what realistically happens is you don't have any more of a clue why it didn't scan than the person that did the scanning. So what I recommend is when they bring the item back to you, take a Post-it note and write the quantity that they scanned on a Post-it note and stick it on the item. Set that item aside on a table, on a desk, whatever. Depending on how many errors you have will depend on how big of a space you'll need. Okay, But generally, I like to have at least a desk or a table available that I can put errors on. Okay, Now, once, once they bring back all of the errors that they found, up here it's grayed out right now because I don't have any errors. but this button right up here that says Resolve, you're going to click on that Resolve button once they've brought back all of the errors. That is going to take all of the errors out of this zone. So because you cannot merge a zone if there are errors in it. 
Okay? So you're going to resolve your errors, and then when you back out, you should see no bad, scan, bad counts in here or bad scans in here, and you can choose to merge it if you want to or to get your printout of your scanned good items. Okay? Now, any questions about errors or downloading the scanner? Okay. Okay then. So back out of the way. Okay. So you're just going to repeat that process over and over and over again until everything on your map has been crossed out. Now, one thing I have found that seems to help me, um, and if if you feel like it'll help you, by all means use it. If you don't think it'll help you can ignore it. But what I usually do is I take my map and I, I, I like neon color post-it. So I usually during a physical inventory will use two different colors. I tend to gravitate towards the green and the pink, but whatever you want to use is up to you. Initially when I start my physical, I will take a post-it note and I will put it in on each section that correlates with my map. So that way, if I'm sending someone over to the back corner and I say, I need you to do section 23, they get back over to the back corner, and they're going to look for a post-it note that says 23. Otherwise, they may get back there and go, what is it? Where do you want me to count? Where do you want me to start? So I find that if I put a post-it note for each section that matches my map, I can send them in the general direction and say, I need you to go do zone 23 or zone 44 or whatever it happens to be. When they're done with that section, I have them take the post-it note off and I replace it with a different color post-it note. Like I said, I like the lime, lime green and the neon pink. So I will replace it with my opposite one. So as I'm standing or sitting at the register or at the computer, I can look out onto the floor and the more pink I see, the more done I know we are. It also gives me a good way of checking that I'm marking off my map appropriately. Because things can get a little crazy, you may have two or three scanners come back all at the same time, and so you're busy downloading those, those scanners and you forgot to mark off on your map what sections they were. So by using the two different color post-its, I can go around while I'm waiting for people to, you know, finish scanning sections, I can walk around and make sure that I have everything marked on my map accordingly. Now, those errors that we just talked about, I had mentioned to you put them on a back table or on a desk or something along those lines. They are not forgotten. They are going to be part of your physical. but. It is your job as the person in charge of the computer to find those items. So you're actually going to back out of the physical inventory, and you're going to get back into your regular inventory. And using all of you know any of your quick filter lookups or your filter view, you're going to try to locate that item that you're holding in your hand that didn't scan right, just like you would if a tag had fallen off. We've all had that situation where you put a tag on something and two months later you pick it up and there's no tag on it. Don't know what happened to it. You just know it doesn't have a tag anymore. So you can maybe look it up by vendor, by department. Maybe there's a style number on the product. Maybe you can tell what size it is. Use whatever tools you need to use to find the item. And then when you find it, create a tag for it. Make sure that you get a tag on it that is going to work and that's going to work for the next time around. Okay? But more importantly, I want you to write down the SKU number, either the ALU or your UPC, whichever one you're using. Write that down on that same little post-it note that we stuck onto the product with the quantity. Write that on the post-it note. Now you can then take the post-it note off of the item and have the clerk take and put it back because you know the SKU, you know the quantity. 
That's all you need to include it in your physical inventory. So you may find that you're in here looking up, you know, a half dozen items. It could be a hundred items by the time all is said and done. But the more you stay on top of it, there are going to be times that that everybody's out scanning and you're just waiting for somebody to come back. And you're going to need some busy work. This is great busy work that nobody else can really do in the process of scanning. So once you find your errors, you're going to go back into physical inventory and zones. You'll notice before we did not have zones as an option to start with. We're going to go into zones. And I recommend that all of those error items go in as their very own zone. So I'm going to create a new zone. Okay, And I usually call it what it is, error 1, error 2, error 3, however many error zones I need to make. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and create it. Okay, Now, again, because I backed out to the regular inventory, I'm not sorting anymore. So I'm going to turn it around and sort the way that I like. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to go over here to Scanned. Um, good question. Um, Samantha want to know how far in advance should you rent your scanners. For this time of the year, the, as soon as you know the date, that that's it. I mean, I do have some customers that reserve them six to nine months in advance because they know they want to do their physical on the 31st or on the 1st. And December, January, even into February are the most popular times for those rentals. So the sooner you get your reservation and the better off you are. We do sometimes have people cancel at the last minute, though. So it's not uncommon to be able to get a scanner rental last minute. But personally, I wouldn't want to take the chance. I'd want to know that I had the scanners ready to go. So yeah, I usually tell my customers, call as soon as you know what the date is or sooner if you know. If you know you're going to do it you know, the last week in December, then reserve them the last week in December and then fine tune the date later on. OK, so good question, though. So I'm going to go into Scanned. And I'm actually going to add counts. And just like I have been doing, because I don't have a scanner hooked up, with your error items, you're going to enter those in on the manual screen. So now, Vicki, for you, this probably won't be an issue, because if you're going to use your point of sale scanner, it will let you know right then and there if the item you scanned is not in the system. But it is going to be on you to pay attention as you're scanning it in that each item is going in. Okay. So I'm just going to put a couple of items in here. Okay. The oh, item not found. Okay. That's what I mean right there, Vicki, is that the screen will pop up if you put an item in there that the system does not recognize it will give you an item not found immediately. So enter in all of your errors manually into their very own zone, and then close it. Okay. Then you can back out, and you can, or you can be in scan, and you can get your print out if you want. Back out, you're error free. Those errors have now been accounted for. They're not in the original section that they were placed in, you know, based on the map. But I do like to have them in their own section. So I have a list of everything that I had a problem with during this physical. So hopefully I can avoid those being issues next year as well, especially if they're items that you carry year after year after year. OK? So now you'll notice that I only have one of my zones merged. I did this on purpose because I wanted to show you how do you resolve errors if you do them at the end. The errors, to resolve the errors, first off, if you're going to use your, your point of cell scanner, you shouldn't have any errors that you have to resolve. But if you're not, if you're using one of the regular portable scanners, you're going to resolve the errors you're going to resolve the errors 
once the clerk or whoever was scanning went out and found those items and brought them back to you, in the error screen, you would resolve those right then and there. You still have to go find them, but you want to get those out of that zone, out of that section. So you resolve them once you physically have found them, and then you enter those in once they've been physically found and you find them in the inventory and find the SKU for them, then you're going to enter them into their own zone all by themselves. Did that answer your question, Vicki? Okay. So, yes, you can cancel or delete a zone. If you, if you feel like, man, this zone is just too messed up. It, I've got 80 errors out of 90 items. I'm starting over. So, yes, you can del delete any zone that you want, okay, and it completely wipes that zone out. It doesn't wipe out the physical inventory, but it does wipe out everything that you downloaded into that zone. Okay? So, good question. Now, when you have dealt with all of your errors, everything is resolved, everything has been entered in, every cabinet, every cupboard, every drawer, if, you sell, if, if you're willing to sell it, it's been counted, is basically rule of thumb. I tell people, if you're willing to sell that piece of art hanging on the wall, then it needs to be counted in your physical inventory. Okay? So everything is counted. Everything is downloaded. We have no bad scans in this column. Everything has been resolved. You can then need to, if you have not been merging as you go, you need to mark all of the zones that are unmarked. So use the Select All button. And you'll notice that, okay, so you'll notice that these got marked right here, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge those that are marked, okay? And I confirm it. You'll notice that it puts the merge marked on them just like it did the one I did manually. So you can either merge as you go or merge at the very end. It's entirely up to you. If you unmerge at the very end, let me go through and unmerge these real quick. If I do not merge until the very end, I can choose to open up any scan zone and I can add to it. Okay, and I can manually add in any item that I want, if I can find an item. Okay, I'm batting a thousand here. Okay, so I can add in any item I want to this section if I have not merged it. If I merged it, it's like closing that file, closing that section. Now, personally, I like to merge as I go because I like that closure. I, I don't want to have to think about what's already been done and cleaned. I want to move on to what I'm, what I'm working on right now. So I do tend to merge as I go, but you can merge at the very end. It is absolutely critical. You have to merge your zones. If you do not merge a zone, that zone will not be counted in the final update. So very, very important that you merge every zone that you want to be part of your physical. Okay. So once they are merged, and everything has been counted, everything has been downloaded, you can now open your doors for business again, okay, first and foremost. Um, but secondly, now you're ready to go back into the store area and deal with your discrepancy, okay? So we scanned 11 items for a total of 11 items, 18 counts, okay? You'll notice here on the side there is a discrepancy button. This discrepancy button is going to show you all of the items where your beginning count, when we took the snapshot of the inventory, doesn't match what you physically counted during your physical inventory. Now, I want to caution you. If you are still in zones, 
there is a discrepancy button here, but it's only showing you the discrepancies in this one section. Some people prefer to do it that way, okay? So everything in that section I had a discrepancy on because I didn't have any quantities to start with, and I counted one. So that is a discrepancy, okay? Now, that's if I'm looking at that one zone. You, most people tend to look at it as a whole for the store. So you should see one line in here when you click on discrepancy. Okay, now that's showing me everything that I had a discrepancy on. Okay, the starting quantity is what I had on hand when I physically started the physical inventory. Scan quantity is what you scan through the course of your physical. And then the discrepancy quantity is the difference between the two. Now, every year we get at least one or two phone calls, concerned, people concerned about, I know that I carry this item in a small, medium, and large, but I'm not seeing my medium on my discrepancy list. That's a good thing. We, we want to be missing items on the discrepancy list, okay? It is only going to show you the items where there is a discrepancy. This is not your full physical inventory. This is your full inventory that there was discrepancies on. So the shorter this list, the, the better off you are, okay? The longer the, this list, the, the more discrepancies you had. Now, if you know that your beginning quantities, if you know that your on-hand quantities right now are complete garbage, you know that they're terrible, you know that they're wrong across the board, you may not want to look at your discrepancy, strictly because you're going to be discrepant on most items because if your beginning number is wrong, no matter how accurate your scanning quantity is, you're going to have a discrepancy, and it's going to look like shrinkage, okay, or overage, depending on which direction your numbers are going, okay. But I do recommend, <coughs> excuse me, most people fall into one of three categories when it comes time for the discrepancy. I have some customers that want to find every last discrepancy, even if it kills them. Now, mind you, they don't have super large inventories. We're not talking 50,000 items here. We're talking a couple thousand, you know, in their entire inventory. So it's, it's a little easier for them to find every last discrepancy. I have some customers that know that their beginning counts were wrong or it's their first physical, and they know that they're going to have a ton of discrepancies, so they're not going to look at anything, okay? Most, cust most retailers fall in that middle category where they look at some of their discrepancies, but they're, gonna, they're willing to, to skip over other discrepancies. What I usually recommend, do, a, do an audit on what is in your discrepancy list, and you can get a printout of this if you want. I usually focus on the big discrepancies. How do I misplace 17? of a pair of pants. That's kind of a difficult thing to, to misplace. It's also kind of a difficult thing for people to steal 17 pairs. So if I were to see this in a real physical inventory, I would, my first instinct would be somebody missed a box someplace. There's some box in the back room or in some cabinet that got missed. We need to find this item and recount it. Okay? Now, I also focus on the ones that are a high ticket value. So, you know, if I'm missing 100 widgets that I sell for a dollar, that's less important to me than finding the one item I'm missing that I retail for $300. That $300 item is going to give me a bigger hit to my shrinkage than the 100 widgets. So, I usually focus on the big quantity differences and or on the big dollar differences. Now let's say that they went out and they recounted this size 10 slack and when they recounted it, they actually, and I'm going to add in just so I can show you. 
I, I go by my ALU more than anything else, so. Okay. So that particular Slack, I go back out and I recount that Slack, and lo and behold, I, I, do, I did find a box that didn't get counted. So again, I can go into the scan, okay? Oh, I, I apologize. So from here, from the discrepancy, I'm going to back out one level get back to the store level and go in and create a new zone to put those into or I'm going to unmerge one of the zones that I have and add it into the zone that it should have been part of. Now I'm going to actually unmerge this um, second one right here. I'm going to unmerge it and then I'm going to go into scan and add some counts to it. I'm going to add that item in. Okay. Only I didn't remember to change over to quantity for current items, so I'm going to put my quantity in right here. And then I will close that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's put it back to one. It's being temperamental with me. Okay, got a quantity. There we go. Okay, so you'll see that it adds in that item that I was discrepant on. So I can go in and add the items that I find. I can add them into an existing zone by unmerging the zone, or I can create a whole new zone of nothing but the discrepancy items. But I do need to merge this zone back before I finish. So I'm going to merge it back. I'm going to back out to the store level and look at my discrepancy again. Now there's still a discrepancy with this item, but two, negative 2 is a whole lot better than negative 17. So finding the items in your discrepancy may not always equal them out, but it may make them better, better than what they were before. So again, you find the item in question. Let me just write that down. Okay. Now, if I go out and I find this item, and I want to add it back in. I'm going to go to PI zones. This time I'm going to add a new zone to do this. I don't want to unmerge what I've already done. I just want to have a zone open that I can put all of my discrepancies in. So I choose my store. I usually will label it okay, something like that and click on Create. Then I will highlight my discrepancy one and go to Scan and leave the add counts open. Oh. Actually, let's go night. Okay. And then I close that. But it didn't show up. There we go. Okay, now I can leave it on the screen while I'm dealing with my discrepancy. So every time somebody finds something, I click on Add Counts, add it back in. Close this. Okay, again, if you're going to enter in multiple quantities, okay, item not found. I need another zero on there. There we go, close that. So I'm just adding to the existing discrepancy zone that I created. And I may end up with 50 or 60 items in here that you recounted. Once you've decided, okay, that's all we're going to double check, then that zone needs to be merged just like all the rest of them. Okay, so now everything is merged. I'm now at the update stage. So I'm going to back out to my store level, again, I should only see one line in here, I'm now ready to actually do the update of the PI. 
Now, the beautiful thing with version 9 versus all the other versions that came before it, the developers have actually learned from the common mistakes that people used to make. In the older versions, version 6 and 7, and yes, I go back that far, um, it was very easy to inadvertently update your physical two or three or four times because you would choose the update option and after a physical inventory, you almost feel like bells and whistles should have gone off, or at least fireworks or something. And there was no visible way of seeing that it had actually updated. Nothing changed on the screen, nothing, you know, it didn't give any message update complete or anything. And so it was not uncommon for people to update two and three times, doubling and tripling and quadrupling their inventory quantities, calling us to help them untangle it and figure out what went wrong it took a lot of tech time to undo. In version 8, they did alleviate that, but one of the problems with version 8 is that they set the default setting on the wrong one. We want to update all inventory, okay? Not just the items that I scanned. If I didn't scan an item, I want the quantity to be changed to zero. If I scanned it, change the quantity to whatever I scan. So that was a common mistake that was made in version 8 that they've now fixed in version 9. So to update, really the only thing you need to do is make sure that your reason is set for physical and then choose the store that you actually want to update and then click on the update button. And it is going to update the entire physical inventory. Okay, I'm not going to do that because I do want to show you how to delete it. You can play around with this before you ever do a physical inventory. You just need to make sure that you delete it out of here before you're done playing around with it. It will not allow you to start a new physical inventory if you've already got one going in there. The computer doesn't know the difference between practice and, and real as far as the physical inventory goes. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that and not update it, but I can inactivate this anytime that I want. Now be aware, make sure that the name, when you're, if you're going to play around with it, make sure that the name is not something that you really want to use because after you've inactivated it, I'm going to go ahead and update my PI after all. So, but once you've inactivated it, it won't let you reuse that name again. Okay, so I just simply click on update and as you can tell it's going through and doing its thing. I have very little inventory in there, but when you see that it has disappeared, you know that it is done. You can also go into the physical inventory and into the archive stores and you will see as soon as it brings up my list, my webinar 15 is right there. So if I wanted to get a printout of it, I could get a printout of it. Okay, I'm just trying to decide which one I want. Okay, all listed record, uh, no, selected record, preview, okay. So this is what the printout would look like of your physical inventory. If you print out your physical inventory, it's going to, now I have it, I'm doing it grouped by department. So it's showing me everything in this department and everything in this department and so on and so forth with totals for each one. Up here at the top, it shows what I started with at cost, what I physically counted at cost, and what my discrepancy was. Same for retail, same for quantity. Ultimately, the most, most of you are going to be looking at the cost number, trying to get it within a certain discrepancy acceptance level, and everybody kind of has their own level. I usually tell people, try your discrepancy, your shrinkage in cost should not be any more than 2% of your total inventory. That's generally, in most retail environments, that's generally an acceptable level. Now, obviously, if I can have it at 1% or half percent, even better. But 2% is about average, okay? 
but if you are not the owner and the one making the decision, find out from them um, you know, what's acceptable because you can spend hours and hours trying to find discrepancies and not find them and not, I mean, if it walked out the door, you don't, you don't know that that's what happened, but you have to assume that's what happened, okay? So that is in my archive physical. Any questions about anything that I have gone over today? Caesar, did you have a question? Okay, I'm going to take everyone off of off of mute. So if you have a question, feel free to just type up and let me know. And Samantha, you seem to be on. Um, you'll have to use your uh, the audio pin that you see on your screen. Any questions whatsoever? Okay, and well, if you have no questions, any questions I can answer about Retail Pro in general? Actually, you know what? I do have a quick question. Uh -huh. um, so let's say you've merged all the zones and you have your new inventory. Suddenly you realize, oh my god, I made a mistake. I forgot some things. Can you, rev how, what's the process to revert back to the starting point again? To the starting point again? It, a lot of it's going to depend on where you're at when you realize that. So unless you're, unless you have updated the physical inventory, you can at any point go back and add to it. Once you've updated, there's no way to add to that physical inventory anymore. So in that case, what I would recommend is go in and make an adjustment memo for the items that you find after you've updated. If it's before you've updated, just make a new zone or add them to an existing zone. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, then. Well, I'm going to let you folks get back to work. And thank you for joining me on today's webinar. Like I had mentioned, it will be up on our website probably within the next 24 to 48 hours you will be able to re-listen and watch this particular webinar and watch it as many times as you feel you need to, okay? Um, keep an eye out. We will be posting our 2016 webinar, webinar topics up any day now, so feel free to sign up for any and all webinars that you'd like to join. And everyone have a great day, and we'll talk to you on the next webinar. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.